What's up, November? What's up, November? How you been? I haven't seen you in a good little year. I think it's been exactly a year. November, November. I was looking at my beard, and it's already pretty thick, and I wanted to do No Shave November, and I got a big old head start. It's going to be a mad thick beard at the end of the month. Heck yeah. I am very appreciative of you listening right now. I love you. I don't know a lot of you, but I do love you. And I wanted to share a couple of emails that I received from you guys. I really appreciate these emails, especially the first one that I'm going to read because it's a little contrary to where I'm at right now. And that stretches me and helps me to learn and understand other perspectives and maybe change mine. So on episode 320, we talked about woke culture and how it's going a little bit too far. At least that's my opinion. And I put a survey out on the discussion page. You can check that out in the show notes. So I had a few options, but the option that won was we've gone too far, period. Now, the second most popular option was we've gone too far, but it's necessary to correct ourselves from how far we were in the other direction. So Jason Stein wrote me, he's from Canada, and he says to me and Jed specifically that we should, every time we think political incorrectness, we should try to replace that phrase with unkindness. And then he says, I think you will see that the arguments in favor of political incorrectness might seem less valid if you start framing political correctness and kindness instead of some onerous task. He gave some resources to check out to learn more and then says, I don't know you, but one of the reasons woke culture gets frustrated is the unapologetic tone taken by Christians, even liberal ones such as yourself. I attended church regularly for the first 43 years of my life. I was a pastor's kid. I lived in the culture of the church. Now that I have my own children, some in college, I can't encourage them to even attend church because one of the most important things preached by Christians, in quotations today, is unkindness to those who are different. We don't have a good track record. We certainly don't, Jason. And I would say, especially in the last few years, it's simply embarrassing. He closes by saying, I hope you continue to at least evolve and try reframing your thoughts. Political incorrectness is unkind and kindness is supposed to be fruit. Even Paul said there is neither Jew nor Greek. I hope you would embrace that. Thanks, Jason. And then Nick Law, what up? He said, I veer more towards liberalism and to the left, some of which is a knee-jerk reaction to being mostly theologically conservative. He thinks that woke culture is going to be as dangerous as the super conservative one. He goes on to say, while woke culture says everyone is inclusive and has the right to be heard, it's only as inclusive as the popular opinion is, and your only right to be heard and have an opinion is if you hold the consensus opinion of the most woke vocal which isn't free speech at all. I think woke culture is toxic and self-righteous and doesn't address, own up to, or for a better word, repent of our own failings, but looks primarily to the failings of others and is quite vengeful and hateful under the cloak and mask of self-righteousness. I agree, man. I agree. He goes on to say, so yes, I think it is necessary to correct ourselves from allowing gay, hating, bigoted, sexist, misogynistic, racist attitudes that woke culture is reacting against. But I don't think the answer is swinging in a completely opposite direction. Without sounding cliched, the answer is to strive to be Christ-like. Thanks, Nick. Can you believe it? Two people listened to the same podcast and came away with completely different sentiments. It's interesting. If I got these guys together, I bet you they would agree on tons. Moving on to Bo Carnes, our newest PWNA patron. Thank you very much. I love the name. I wish my name was Bo. And I want to tell you a little bit about joining the patron family. You get your own podcast feed called PWNA Raptured. I call it that because anytime I record anything, I give it to you right away. It's unedited, unfiltered. You get to hear before and after discussions, which can sometimes be pretty interesting. But you get that. You get your own podcast feed. I put out weekly devotions, PWNA style, and then we definitely have some exclusive stuff just for you on that 
podcast feed. So we have a pretty killer deal for you right now. The lowest giving tier is going to be $8 starting January. Right now it's $5 and you can lock yourself in for the long haul throughout all eternity, honestly. And that comes with the Raptured podcast. It comes with a signed thank you postcard. I don't know why you would care that it's signed, but oh well. A shout out on the podcast, quarterly Q&As with guests of the show. Brian McLaren's coming up in December. You can take part in that if you become a patron. And you get a community of friends, man, to discuss episodes and various topics. You also are giving every month to donorseed.com forward slash PWNA helps. You should check out the things that we have done all around the world as patrons through Donor C. And then you get a patron only Dropbox folder, free download of my book, some random digital gifts, and access to my photo dump. That's for you creepers out there. So I love you guys. Thank you, Bo. So the episode you're about to listen to was originally intended to be the intro of an episode with a main interview, but I liked this conversation a lot and actually was personally greatly affected by the conversation. So I'm going to let this be a standalone, man. And don't forget, next episode is Jesus and John Wayne author Kristen Kobes Dumez. <laughs> I'm sure I botched her name up. I have it written down in my notes for the actual episode, so I'll, I'll nail it. I'll nail it on that episode. But anyway, Jesus and John Wayne, How White Evangelicals Corrupted a Faith and Fractured a Nation. That will be next. Peace out. So, Ellen, a, f- a few weeks ago, we had a conversation or discussion about is sex necessary? And we talked about it on an individual level. So we talked about in a marriage, in a marriage, right? W- well, I think were we talking about it's a marriage? It's necessary for procreation. For sure. It's definitely necessary for procreation. It's necessary for procreation. Yep. <laughs> Most definitely. I've got two kids to prove so. You have how many, Joey? Seven? Four, baby. Four, baby. Four. Well, Four. Te- technically, it's not. Because I'm of, sorry. It's not, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Modern, oh, technology. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. modern yeah. technology. Sure, sure. So my question Excuse is. Excuse us, Mrs. Scientist. <laughs> I feel like that we we went down a path, and I agree with you. It was almost a logistical path of do we, and no, do we need sex? Like we need water. We need air. We need food. But that sex isn't something that we need. And I feel like it's a little more nuanced than that. So I wanted to bring this um, to the table and get y'all's opinions on it. So my question is, and I felt like when we were talking about it, we were talking about it at an individual level, which is, you know, does a human body need sex? And maybe I misunderstood that. But springboarding from that spot, um, the answer would be no, they don't need it. But then the other question I have is, does a human being need relationship? Yes or no? Oh, I think I think you're. Oh. Hang on, hang yeah. on. Does it, does a human being need relationship to be to, to be, be healthy, healthy? To be healthy. To be healthy, yeah. yes, yes. To live, no. Right. To be to be healthy. To be healthy. And I want to put this in the context of health of healthy. So that being said, in a relationship that is an intimate relationship, be it a marriage, or be it uh, a partnership. Um, or, you know, I'm not talking about, you know, buddies. I'm talking about a relationship relationship. I believe that sex is necessary for the health of that relationship to continue and be healthy. I would use the word necessary there. So, I and I told you yesterday that I don't agree and and it may be anticlimactic because it may be one of those things to where you're just like, well, of course, but I don't think it's that simple. And here's why there are some relationships that ideally would be sexual, but it's impossible. One of them could be asexual. So they're not desiring that at all. One of them could have major erectile dysfunction. So that is super tough and challenging. There could be paralysis from the waist down. And so I just feel like that sort of, even though there's these exceptions are so rare, 
that sort of mentality and that sort of approach sets some people up to have to think along the lines of, well, if we can't have healthy sexual interaction, then we we're always going to be missing the mark in a healthy relationship. And or what if you have a married couple? I know I know for sure some guys who aren't super interested in sex and they're married. I definitely know some women who are not interested in sex and they're married. What if you have both of them? Like, what if you have a married couple and neither? They're just like, yeah, I could take it or leave it. It seems like that may be a possible preference and it may not say anything about the health or unhealthiness. Now, I would say in an ideal world, connecting on that level and sharing those those just heightened pleasures together in such an intimate way certainly doesn't hurt things. Sure. But I, sure. And, and, and Alan, do you, I mean, you're, you're coming from a perspective of you, you are someone who's not super interested in sex. I don't know how much you want to get into that, but you are basically bringing in a different perspective because I really like it. I think Hayne does. Well, first of all, let me close the door because I am at my in-laws' house. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> um, Man, if they caught you talking about this, this would be the best podcast ever. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, first of all, my dream is to be old and to just have that companionship relationship because, I mean, I'm – I haven't even turned 40 yet and I'm already like not interested. So when I'm in my seventies, eighties, like I already know that that's probably not going to be in my life. And does that mean that my relationship is going to be suffering? I, I don't think so. I think when we think of old people, I think just like the companionship and the, the respect and the loyalty is, is the health of the relationship. Um, However, I mean, I am in my 30s and I'm married and I do agree that in an ideal world, it would be um, like a robust part of my life. Um, So to answer your question, Hayne, yes, I do think that I don't, I I think it's necessary if you want the ideal marriage. I don't think it's- Would you you call that healthy? Would you say that? When you say ideal, that it's healthiest? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, but I don't think that not having it a part of your relationship means you're unhealthy necessarily. Absolutely. And and I want to be careful. To, like I was making a universal statement there and I was making a more general statement. I probably should have clarified that at the, at the beginning. I think, and I agree, like and, what Joe... And- are you talking about just any type of like s- sexual intimacy, acts yeah. of sexual intimacy? Yes, I am. Okay. So, like even like kissing. Absolutely. And that's okay. something that I kind of wanted to also bring up is I wanted to ask everybody their definition of sex. And okay. of course, there's intercourse, you know, P and V sex, and then all the things P&V. that bring V. Is that the first time you've heard that? I mean, maybe in the last 30 years. <laughs> hey, this is pastor with no answers. Penis penis and vagina. Let's just, oh, hi, Joey, let's just say, back. oh, Joey just walked into that. <laughs> I just so, got the old P and V. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we're, um, Joey, we're actually unpacking now something you and I briefly talked about which is define sex, you know, um, which uh, Ellen and I were talking about that. And in and, and, and my space, it's not necessarily penis, you know, in vagina, vaginal intercourse or orgasmic, something that's coming to, to an orgasmic ending, but something where there is a physical connection or intimacy, whether that's holding hands, whether that is um, hugs, embraces, it's that it is something that you do physically that you share with no other person. Yeah. That this is really just convicting, share, actually. You just share that together. So um, kind of expanding and, and getting a little more nuanced into the thought, um, of course, there's going to be people 
um, which you brought up, Joey, before, like, you know, they've, they may be a paraplegic from an accident or they have ALS or there's just zero libido on each side. That doesn't necessarily mean, though, that they still cannot sexually connect. It may not be with their genitalia, but they're having a physical connection with each other that they share with nobody else. And that's what makes it so special. That yeah. if, they, if they didn't have that, then that person is just a roommate, you hmm. know. It's just it's oh. just someone who's a friend in their life. That this they is respect. really convicting, Hayne. Well, I didn't mean for it to be. But, no, I. Um, this is good. This is good timing. Just just this last week. You guys um, want to make a small I, group? Yeah, you know, you know, we can. This can be a small group. We'll meet regularly. <laughs> yeah. We'll call it small uh, group. Lay, the podcast. Lay hands. Lay hands on the Zoom cam. Who's bringing? Um, uh, I, who's bringing the beer next time? Ellen, will you always ask me if I'm looking at porn every single week that we get together? Sure. As my accountability sure. buddy. Just give me your email, <laughs> the uh, accountability software. <laughs> um, I told Cole yesterday on the way home from church. I said I, I had like put my hand on his shoulder while he was driving for like you know ten to fifteen seconds maybe. And I said, have you been, have you noticed I've been trying to be a little more affectionate with you lately? And he said, huh? No. And I was mm. like, oh, damn it. Mm. Oh, no. So now that we haven't talked about it, but I've just like by myself privately decided, Ellen, you've got to just at least try and make like a, a physical connection, even if it's just like trying to hug or, you know, because we're, we're parents of two little kids in a little house. Yeah. Right. We're always irritated. We're always just sort of like in a bunch of our own filth. Our house is always a wreck. We're always kind of stressed. It's just, it, we're definitely in that roommate, uh, co-parenting kind of phase. And it honestly, it doesn't help that my kid is still sleeping in my bed, but sure. it, that's an, another topic. Um, so I've been, I, I know that I want my marriage to be in a place where we are both happy with the level of physical intimacy. Hmm. And hmm. it's hard because I am totally fine with zero, hmm. but that could be because of the medication that I'm on. Um, the SSRIs really kind of mess you up in that way. And also just being postpartum and hating my body and all kinds of things, right? Like I'm not interested even seeing myself naked, let alone having my husband see me naked. So hmm. it's like, there's a lot to unpack there for me. Um, and I, I tend to be the person that's like, well, I'm not going to bring it up because I know he won't because he's kind of passive and he's a people pleaser. He's a nine. So like, I know he won't bring it up. Mm. So if I don't bring it up, I don't have to do it. But then it's like, but Ellen, how are you loving him in this arena? I could love him by just bringing it up and making a conversation about it, you know? Mm. Well, uh, you know, as that's we, what's convicting. As we wrap this small group up, Ellen, I just want to challenge you. And I just want to say, what are you going to do with this? Like, are you just going to let this be a conversation? What is your action plan? No, well, I did. My I, action... I did want to ask him <laughs> no, because but... I, to I totally lost power. And so I missed a lot of this. Are you saying that basically there can be sexual interaction and sexual relationships outside of the genitalia completely. Because even if I am making out with my wife, I'm still benefiting down there. If down there is not working at all, I probably don't want to be making out with my wife other than loving her. And if she enjoys it, that's one thing, but it, what, what, what does sexuality look like removing R genitalia? Right. Absolutely. So yes, I am espousing that it doesn't mean genitalia. And um, I'll get real personal here. And you guys know this story. But like, I'm in a season of life right now where my wife's in chemotherapy. You know, my wife, um, and when we both generally have, you know, look, we do have libidos, we have regular sex. That has changed um, at some level right now, because she's in chemotherapy. Um, that completely just wax everything out, um, as she's battling breast cancer. But, um, 
even on days which are very common now, where we're not going to necessarily have intercourse with each other, just laying in bed at night and holding her hand, just doing that, just laying in bed in the dark and holding her hand, to me, is a form of having sex. It is a way that I'm physically connected to her to say, um, I'll touch nobody else in this way. It's just us, and I am here right now, and I'm going to be close to you, and I'm going to be intimate with you in this way because this is what works for us. Well, right now, damn, I'm convicted too, Alan. So, Dean, <laughs> will you be our small group leader? <laughs> okay, I accept. I accept. I um, do like that. I do. We're like gonna be doing that. an RC like Sproul book next. I, I like what you said about yeah, you won't touch anybody else in this way. There are there are specific things that you do physically that you don't do with someone that's right. not your spouse, and those Absolutely. are the things. Absolutely. My grandmother, this is kind of cool. My grandmother, um, she was a North Carolina farmer's daughter, born in like 1914, but um, very um, progressive when it came to sexuality. But one of the things that she always said is she said, sex is mortar in a marriage. And I remember <laughs> the first time she said that, I'm like, what is she wow, talking about? Grandma. You know? Grandma. But she said, think of a wall, think of a big cinder block or brick wall. She said, the the blocks, what makes up that wall is friendship, it's respect, it is responsibility, it's admiration, kind of went down. But she said, but sex, sexuality, sex, maybe not intercourse, but that's the mortar that holds it all together. That's what makes it uniquely yours. And if it's just mortar, the wall will fall down. And if it's just bricks with no mortar, it won't last a hard wind. And she said, there are times in life where life is going to be really hard. Kids, uh, bad medical diagnoses, things are bad at work. And she said, it's going to be hard to connect because of the lack of time. But she said that sexuality, it can't be the wall, but it can be the glue at times when life is hard to stay connected and work through those things together. And, um, I that, thought it was That's the most amazing. epic sex talk I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was amazing. And I've carried it, you know, since I was a late teenager. That's when I heard her say that. <laughs> so. See, now I think commitment is my mortar and sex is one of the bricks. The bricks, yeah. Yeah. Because all, uh, yeah. Yeah. The season, seasons of life when sex is not happening, we're committed to each other no matter yeah. what. Yeah. So, Hayne, would it work if we were in small group and I was living in Asheville and some of this stuff that you're talking about with holding hands and and just laying there? Like if I'm if if I'm kind of in a season where that stuff is tough with Priscilla, can would it be OK if you and I practice? Would that ruin it for you and Erica? That would be the most progressive small group ever. <laughs> and I completely support this idea. That's some that sounds like we're getting into some swinging territory, which I am not into. <laughs> Thank you, Hayne. Seriously, like I thought I really didn't expect that. I think you actually really <laughs> you spoke, yeah, this is, you this spoke was, to me and Ellen's hearts, brother. You spoke yeah, to well, man, this is necessary. When we had the original conversation, I was like, uh, this stuff was like in the back and the tip of my tongue, but I hadn't had it formulated enough to actually jump in. But yeah, it's kind of fun. Well, that we and did this it, was, you know, I think that later. conversation was before you found out it about was the breast cancer. Dang. It was totally before wow, the breast cancer. Wow, wow. that's a big so wow. it, it, it it's a huge wow. Thank you, Alan, for saying that. It's a huge wow. So it it really comes full circle, you know, right now. Yeah, for, so for me personally. So we we had this discipleship program that we were doing. Gosh, it was probably 10 years ago. And so I had one group at night and then I had one group at six o'clock in the morning. And so basically there was about 10 people, five couples that would meet at this house at six o'clock in the morning and we would do the discipleship study. And it was, it was kind of like a, a, a small group on, on speed. I mean, it was like, really, you get deeper, you challenge each other and all that kind of stuff. But think about it. People are waking up and they're going to work and they see five couples leaving this house at 7.15 a.m. <laughs> hugging, you know, <laughs> embracing each other. So the, the person who was hosting, their neighbor finally got the guts to ask and they're just like, so 
What's you guys going are swingers? No, yeah. totally laid out there. He said, you guys are swingers? And they're like, no, we're in a Bible study. You know? so. <laughs>